This is what hundreds of millions of gamers in the world plays on. It's a GeForce. This is the chip that's inside. For nearly 30 years, NVIDIA's chips have been coveted by gamers, shaping what's possible in graphics and dominating the entire market since it first popularized the term graphics processing unit with the GeForce 256. Now, its chips are powering something entirely different. ChatGPT has started a very intense conversation. He thinks it's the most revolutionary thing since the iPhone. Venture capital interest in AI startups has skyrocketed. All of us working in this field have been optimistic that at some point the broader world would understand the importance of this technology. And it's, it's actually really exciting that that's starting to happen. As the engine behind large language models like ChatGPT, NVIDIA is finally reaping rewards for its investment in AI, even as other chip giants suffer in the shadow of US-China trade tensions and an ease in the chip shortage that's weakened demand. But the California-based chip designer relies on Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company to make nearly all its chips, leaving it vulnerable. The biggest risk is, is really kind of US-China relations and the potential impact to TSMC. That's, that, if, if I'm a shareholder in NVIDIA, that's really the only thing that keeps me up at night. This isn't the first time NVIDIA has found itself teetering on the leading edge of an uncertain emerging market. It's neared bankruptcy a handful of times in its history when founder and CEO Jensen Huang bet the company on impossible seeming ventures. Every company makes mistakes and um, I make a lot of them. And you know, some of them, some of them um, uh, puts the company in peril, especially in the beginning. Because we were small and, and we're up against very, very large companies and we're trying to invent this brand new technology. We sat down with Huang at NVIDIA's Silicon Valley headquarters to find out how he pulled off this latest reinvention and got a behind the scenes look at all the ways it powers far more than just gaming. Now one of the world's top 10 most valuable companies, NVIDIA is one of the rare Silicon Valley giants that 30 years in still has its founder at the helm. I delivered the first one of these inside an AI supercomputer to OpenAI when it was first created. This is not a chip business. This is a business of figuring out things end to end. But at the start, its future was far from guaranteed. In the beginning, there weren't that many applications for it, frankly. And we smartly chose uh, one particular combination that was a home run. It was computer graphics, and we applied it to video games. Now, NVIDIA is known for revolutionizing gaming and Hollywood with rapid rendering of visual effects. NVIDIA designed its first high-performance graphics chip in 1997. Designed, not manufactured, because Huang was committed to making NVIDIA a fabulous chip company keeping capital expenditure way down by outsourcing the extraordinary expense of making the chips to TSMC. On behalf of all of us, you're my hero. Thank you. Thank you. NVIDIA today wouldn't be here um, if, and, and nor, nor the other thousand fabulous semiconductor companies wouldn't be here if not for the pioneering work that uh, TSMC did. In 1999, after laying off the majority of workers and nearly going bankrupt to do it, NVIDIA released what it claims was the world's first official GPU, the GeForce 256. It was the first programmable graphics card that allowed custom shading and lighting effects. By 2000, NVIDIA was the exclusive graphics provider for Microsoft's first Xbox. Microsoft and the Xbox happened at exactly the time that we invented this thing called a programmable shader, and it defines how computer graphics is done today. NVIDIA went public in 1999, and its stock stayed largely flat until demand went through the roof during the pandemic. In 2006, it released a software toolkit called CUDA that would eventually propel it to the center of the AI boom. It's essentially a computing platform and programming model that changes how NVIDIA GPUs work, from serial to parallel compute. Parallel computing is, let me take a task and attack it all at the same time using much smaller machines, right? So as it's the difference between having an army where you have one giant soldier who's able to do things very well, but one at a time, versus an army of thousands of soldiers who are able to take that problem, right, and do it in parallel. So it's a very different computing approach. NVIDIA's big steps haven't always been in the right direction. 
In the early 2010s, it made unsuccessful moves into smartphones with its Tegra line of processors. You know, they, they quickly realized that the smartphone market uh, wasn't for them, so they exited um, right uh, from that. In 2020, NVIDIA closed a long-awaited $7 billion deal to acquire data center chip company Mellanox. But just last year, NVIDIA had to abandon a $40 billion bid to acquire ARM, citing significant regulatory challenges. ARM is a major CPU company known for licensing its signature ARM architecture to Apple for iPhones and iPads, Amazon for Kindles, and many major car makers. It was a new, incredibly accurate neural network that obliterated the competition during a prominent image recognition contest in 2012. Turns out the same parallel processing needed to create lifelike graphics is also ideal for deep learning, where a computer learns by itself rather than relying on a programmer's code. We had the good wisdom to go put the whole company behind it. We saw early on, about a decade or so ago, that this way of doing software could change everything. And we changed the company from the bottom all the way to the top and sideways. Every chip that we made um, was focused on artificial intelligence. Brian Catanzaro was the first and only employee on NVIDIA's deep learning team six years ago. Now it's 50 people and growing. For 10 years, Wall Street asked NVIDIA, why are you making this investment? No one's using it. And they valued it at zero dollars in our market cap. Uh, and it wasn't until around 2016 that after, you know, 10 years after CUDA came out, that all of a sudden people understood this is a dramatically different way of writing computer programs and it has transformational speed ups that then yield breakthrough results in artificial intelligence. So what are some real world applications for NVIDIA's AI? Healthcare is one big area. Think far faster drug discovery and DNA sequencing that takes hours instead of weeks. We were able to achieve the Guinness World Record in a genomic sequencing technique to actually diagnose these patients and administer one of the patients in the trial to have a heart transplant, a 13-year-old boy who's thriving today as a result, and then also um, a three-month-old baby that was having epileptic seizures and to be able to prescribe an anti-seizure medication. And then there's art powered by NVIDIA AI, like Rafiq Anadol's creations that cover entire buildings. And when crypto started to boom, NVIDIA's GPUs became the coveted tool for mining the digital currency. Which is not really a recommended usage, uh, but that has created uh, you know, problems because you know, crypto mining has been a boom or bust cycle. So gaming cards right, go out of stock, prices get bid up, and then when the crypto mining boom collapses, then there is a big crash right, on the gaming side. Although NVIDIA did create a simplified GPU made just for mining, it didn't stop crypto miners from buying up gaming GPUs, sending prices through the roof. And although that shortage is over, NVIDIA caused major sticker shock among some gamers last year by pricing its new 40 series GPUs far higher than the previous generation. Now there's too much supply, and the most recently reported quarterly gaming revenue was down 46% from the year before. But NVIDIA still beat expectations in its most recent earnings report, thanks to the AI boom, as tech giants like Microsoft and Google fill their data centers with thousands of NVIDIA A100s, the engines used to train large language models like ChatGPT. When we ship them, uh, we don't ship them in packs of one, we ship them in packs of eight. With a suggested price of nearly $200,000, NVIDIA's DGX A100 server board has eight Ampere GPUs that work together to enable things like the insanely fast and uncannily human-like responses of ChatGPT. I have been trained on a massive data set of text, which allows me to understand and generate text on a wide range of topics. Companies scrambling to compete in generative AI are publicly boasting about how many NVIDIA A100s they have. Microsoft, for example, trained ChatGPT with 10,000. It's very easy to use their products uh, and add more computing capacity. And once you add that computing capacity, computing capacity is basically the currency of the valley right now. And the next generation up from Ampere, Hopper, has already started to ship. Some uses for generative AI are real-time translation and instant text-to-image renderings. 
But this is also the tech behind eerily convincing and some say dangerous deepfake videos, text, and audio. Are there any ways that NVIDIA is sort of protecting against some of these bigger fears that people have or building in safeguards? Yes, I think the safeguards uh, that we're building as an industry about how AI is going to be used are extraordinarily important. And we're trying to find ways of authenticating content so that we can know if a video was actually created in the real world or virtually similarly for text and audio.